Hello and welcome to SGN Tech Forum. I hope you're enjoying Cisco Modeling Lab. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use external connectors. Why you would like to use external connector? You may have a situation where you are, have a lab running as a simulation, and now you want to connect this lab within simulation to the outside world, or some nodes in the lab need connection to internet so that they can up download patches, etc. In that in that kind of use cases, what you need to do, you need to rely on external connectors. And, and the external connectors are typically of two types, NAT and bridge. NAT, as you can guess, is pretty straightforward. When you configure your external connection in NAT mode, there is a dedicated DSCP pool for NAT, as you can see, 192.168.255. So whatever IP address you have configured internally within your lab, they will be natted to this subnet. And this is very useful if you are running Linux servers and other kind of servers, and there is no specific configuration needed. It pretty much works out of the box. However, we are going to focus on bridge bridges, and this is the second type. The system bridge uses a bridge named bridge g0 which also contains the main interface of the cml server configured during initial post installation step so when you install your cml server the bridge 0 is created by default and it has the virtual nick of the cml assigned to it then when an external connector node is started the mapped bridge must exist Obviously, if you are using bridge zero, it is already existing, but you can go ahead and create more bridges in case you want or your use case from sysadmin console. Once the link connected to the node is started, which can only happen when both links node are started, that means you have an external connector and then you have a node which is can be router, switch, whatnot. When both are started, the fabric service creates a virtual interface connected to the bridge on one end with traffic relayed through the fabric to the linked node interface. So you may be wondering that when you create an additional bridge, what is the VNIC where, how, or how you create that VNIC? It is created automatically by fabric services. So looking at this description, it feels like we do not have to do anything, but is that simple? I tried that and it was not working. So I had to do some more digging and this is what I found. There are some prerequisite for system bridges and we are focusing on a ESXi configuration. That means you, you have deployed your CML on a EXI, ESXi server. So what you need to do? You need to do two things. The first is on ESXi host where your CML VM is running, Configure the advanced system setting and enable two parameters. Net reserve path forward check, set it to one. Net reverse path forward check, promiscuous, set it to one. And you have to go in this order. So first you have to enable this advanced system settings and then go ahead, find the vSwitch where your CML is connected to, then go ahead and enable or toggle promiscuous mode and forge transmit mode to accept. So these are the things you do from your vCenter or VMware because this is essentially look necessary for host at host level and port group and vSwitch level. Again, as I mentioned, please make sure that uh, you change the advanced setting before changing the promiscuous mode. However, there are high chances that while doing all this uh, bridge and vSwitch changes, you may lose access or you may accidentally mess up something and now you do not have access to your CML UI because it's not available. There may be some kind of loop created or bridge has dropped the interface. In that case, don't lose your heart. What you can do, you can connect to say web console of the CML from v, uh, VMware and then go ahead and invoke the initial Python initial setup script Python script by using this command. So you go to your CML web console, 
login and then run this command this will invoke the ip uh, configuration initialization window so and once you complete your initialization the things will come back so please take a note of this all right now let's see things in action here i'm here at my v center i'm going to go ahead and first change the host settings advanced settings and enable those two parameters so you need to select the host not the cml server but select the host configure advanced system setting edit you can see these are the parameters which is already enabled so let's search for that parameter net dot reverse and as you type you will see those things will start showing up here so there are too many parameters with net let's say net dot reverse yes so we have only two parameters net reverse path forward check and promiscuous promiscuous as you can see the value is set to zero so let's go ahead and set it to one okay so the first part is done now for the second part you have to go to the v vm itself and within vm we are going to find the nic where this uh, which is attached to to the v switch and in my case that is vlan 321 sorry i'm scrolling a little bit fast here let me find that yes you can see we have two virtual machines assigned to this vlan or the v, v switch now go to security i'm going to set promiscuous and forge from reject by default it is reject i'm going to say uh, toggle it and change it to accept and sometime just switching the value may not take effect so you need to click on override let's verify if the changes has taken effect go to policies you can see promiscuous is still accept and forge is set to transmit let's go ahead and edit one more time security and i'm going to say override override Yes, now they both are set to accept. That's what we want. This is a good time. To, let's go ahead and power on our CML server. And this is the CML sysadmin interface. Here you can see this is the host dashboard, how my CPU and memory utilization looks like. As you can see, as the VM boots up, the network traffic started coming back. Let's click on host networking. And as you can see, we have the default bridge already created. The default bridge is bridge zero. And the IP address and DNS, whatever you see, it was given during the VM provisioning. We have another bridge which I created, bridge one. So you can create your own bridge and assign IP address to that. But most of the time, bridges do not need an IP address. So you can go ahead and disable address, DNS, and route parameters. This is the sysadmin console where you can create additional bridges. Now let's go to CML UI. This is where you create your simulations. I have two simulations running here. So this is a functioning lab. I'm going to start that lab. That means all the nodes they have the required configuration whatever lab i wanted to build here in this case but from my local laptop or anywhere in my network i cannot connect to these nodes and for that we are going to use external con connector and as you can see we i already have an external connector it is connected to an unmanaged switch 
an unmanaged switch think of it just like a hub you cannot configure it you can only do uh, connect your ports to the to this one so as you can see if for this video we have external connector connected to the unmanaged switch and then which is in turn connected to spine 01 our goal is to make sure spine 01 is accessible from my home network for that what we are going to do we are going to uh, let's start up all the nodes first as you can see spine is booting because we have started the lab and you need a little bit of uh, well, initial configuration so spine gigabit zero by zero is our vrf interface and i have assigned an ip address which is same as or reachable from my laptop and defined a default route for that so 10.100.84 as you can see i can ping 80 and i can ping the gateway as well And now you can ignore this because as, as a part of configuration, things are coming up. Now you can see this I term is from my local machine that says outside the simulation. And you can see I can ping my spine node, which is part of simulation. Let's see if we can SSH to that node. Yes, SSH is responding. However, for SSH, I may need a little bit of more configuration, extra configuration. So I want to specify what will be the SSH source interface. I'm going to say IP SSH source interface as my management interface, which is gigabit Ethernet 0 by 0. Make sure you have a username and password created so that you can use that to SSH to the box. And also let's see if we are running any kind of AAA here. So we have a user, Cisco and admin. And as you can see online VTY, we have transport input SSH and it's connect, it says login. But do we have any login parameter like AAA defined on the switch? Let's confirm. As you can see, we do not have any AAA. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to say line VTY 0 to 15, login local. That means use the local username and password when responding to a NSSH ping. And here, as you can see, I'm trying to do SSH to the box, put the password, and I'm connected to my box. This is from local machine. The advantage being now this, all the, nodes within the simulation they are exposed they are exposed to the outside world and if you are running any kind of controller or any kind of ansible um, server you can use these ip addresses to talk to the node and perform your configuration management or monitoring or whatever you want to do so now the simulation nodes are being part of your network so this is all i wanted to show you for this quick video i hope uh, you are enjoying the content here so please go ahead do like subscribe and share thank you i'll see you in next video